Hello everyone. My name is Christiane Kuhn and I'm a PhD candidate at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Today I'm happy to present to you our paper Onion Routing with Replies. This paper is joint work together with Dennis Hofheinz, Andy Rupp and Thorsten Strufe. Let us first start by thinking why we need onion routing in the first place. One goal of onion routing is to provide relationship privacy, so to hide who is communicating with whom from the adversary. And this is a very important goal. Just imagine Alice contacting a web server that only offers information about a specific disease like cancer or depression then it is highly likely that Alice suffers from this disease, an information that we much rather keep hidden from the adversary. Now, if we want to realize this goal, of course, Alice cannot send her message directly to the receiver because the adversary is likely to be able to observe this. And even further, we do not trust the receiver and the receiver might be collaborating with the adversary. So instead, we need some kind of indirection and for this, we are using onion routing. Onion routing employs multiple relays between the senders and receivers of the communication. And the message from the sender will be encrypted in multiple layers or with one layer for each relay so that once it goes to the network, each relay will peel off one layer of this packet, which is also called onion because it consists of this many layers. Now, if the onion routing scheme is working correctly, then the adversary cannot link onions before the relay to the ones after the relay. And this ensures that as long as one of the relays is honest, the adversary does not know which sender was contacting which receiver because he does not know how the onions are linked in this case. In our example, um, the adversary would be able to observe that Alice is sending the gray onion and he can even link it to the blue one because he controls the first relay. But then from the blue one, he would have no clue whether the next onion is going to be the green or the yellow one um, once the honest relay is done with the processing. So at this point, um, we unlink the senders from the receivers because the, of the honest relay and that the adversary cannot revert and link onions before and after the honest relay. Now it is really important that we get this unlinking of the onions before and after the honest relay right and therefore we are interested in constructing a secure onion routing packet format. Now a packet format can only be um, preventing the linkings of onions that are based on the packet itself. Of course, there are more dimensions like the timing of the onions or traffic patterns that are important in practice to unlink senders and receivers, but they cannot be solved with a packet format and instead an orthogonal goal. And there are orthogonal measures that can be applied. But for now, we are interested in providing a secure packet format and solving this challenge first. For this, let us look at how onion routing packet formats typically look like. And they typically consist of a header and a payload. The header contains the routing information as well as key material for the relays. But the header is encrypted in multiple layers in a clever way such that each relay only learns the information that is absolutely necessary to do this one step of the path and this one processing. The payload, on the other hand, is onion encrypted in the sense that, well, the first layer will be, uh, is there for the first relay, the second layer for the second relay, and so on. So if we look at this example of the blue onion, first of all, the outermost layer of the header is encrypted with the public key of the first relay so the first relay can remove this layer and sees that the onion needs to go to the second relay next and the first relay will also remove one layer of encryption from the payload thereby it um, gets the the second onion the, the green onion and now the second relay will remove one layer of encryption from the header to realize that it has to send the onion to the final receiver next. 
and one layer from the payload. And thereby, the encrypted payload finally gets sent to the receiver and the receiver can remove the last layer of encryption to see the included message. Now, one interesting thing to notice about most onion routing packet formats is that they protect the integrity of the header for every hop on the path, but the payload integrity is only checked at the final receiver. And this fact that we only check the payload integrity at the very end enables dangerous attack, the malleability attack. The malleability attack assumes that the adversary controls the first relay and the final receiver and wants to link the sender to the receiver and thereby break relationship privacy. The idea is that the first relay will notice when the victim sends a message. In this case, Alice sends the gray message. Then the first relay notices that the zonion consists of a header and the payload, but it will further modify the payload and change a bit in it um, but we'll leave the header as it is and process the onion um, just as it would uh, process any usual onion, except that now the payload has been modified. Now the next honest relay will not notice that anything in the onion has been modified because it only checks the header and the check for the header goes through. Then this onion will be processed further until it finally uh, is ending at the receiver. And at the receiver, we can now notice that, well, the message does not look like we expect it to. There is no English language or a typical pattern in there, but instead it's only random bits. Now this helps our adversarial receiver to notice that this onion must have been modified before. And of course, it is highly likely that this modification indeed was the one of our adversary that just changed Alice's message in the beginning. And therefore, Alice was contacting this receiver and the adversary learned who is communicating with whom, even though there is an honest relay in between. Now, to prevent this attack for the case where Alice just wants to send a message to the receiver, um, we can simply add some protection for the payload because Alice knows the message of the payload. She can pre-calculate how the payload has to look like during each part of the path, and then she can explicitly authenticate the payload with a message authentication code. And this will lead to the fact that our honest relay will drop the modified onion because we can now realize that somebody tampered with the payload. And in the result, the message of L the onion of Alice is not being sent forward anymore. And therefore the adversary does not learn to whom this message was actually addressed to. Now this works for the case that Alice wants to send a message to the receiver, but what happens if the receiver actually also wants to reply? Therefore, we first have a look at how we in general solve replying to an anonymous sender. Um, therefore, we need to build replyable onions. And replyable onions in principle look like normal onions, but additionally, the sender will construct a header for the backward path. So the uh, sender will pick the relays for the backward path as well as the keys that should be used during this backward uh, communication. And then this header is included in the payload of our onion, such that the receiver then gets to retrieve it as part of the payload that he gets. Um, and now he can use the header um, together with the reply that he actually wants to send and just has to attach um, the new payload to it. So basically, the sender is already constructing a back envelope for the receiver, even though the receiver cannot read all the details of the um, back envelope because the information of the reply path is hidden in the header such that only each relay learns as much as it needs to learn to then forward the onion until it's back at our original sender, Alice. Now, if we want to make sure that our onion routing scheme is actually also secure for replies, we do have one more requirement. We require that replies and requests are indistinguishable except at the sender and receiver. So any intermediate relay dealing with, a, uh, with an onion should have no clue whether it's a 
um, request from the sender to the receiver or a reply backwards from the receiver to the sender again. We do this because there might be use cases where only very few replies exist. And then of course, the set of the candidates that have sent the reply is very small and having very small so-called anonymity sets is dangerous for the users because then the attacker could do more attacks or use additional knowledge to exclude um, users from this set. So we want our requests and replies to be indistinguishable. However, we of course additionally want to protect the malleability attack. But if we want to protect the malleability attack, we need to make sure that we protect the payload um, for requests from the sender to the receiver. Now, if we want to have this request reply in distinguishability, this means we also need to protect the payload for reply messages. Um, but protecting the payload for reply messages is actually not as easy as for requests. Because now, well, our sender cannot pre-calculate any message authentication codes for it because the sender does not know how the reply will look like. So he does not know how the payload on the reply path has to look like. On the other hand, we can also not have our receiver generate such um, protection measures because the receiver is not trusted in this use case. So we cannot have him um, know how parts of the onion will look like uh, once they are close at the sender again, because otherwise the receiver would just wait for Alice to send her request to him and then send his reply back and recognize his onion, even though um, he never modified anything just because he added parts to this onion that he can then add the relay clues to the sender, um, recognize again, and therefore he will know which sender sent the request and to which sender his reply just went. Um, so we can't do this um, explicitly, but instead we need to find some more clever way to protect the payload and we look, and therefore we look for something like implicit payload authentication. And we found two ways to do this. And those two ways to implicitly protect the payload are the basic ideas behind our secure repliable onion routing protocols. And the first way to do this is by using snags. And the idea behind this is very easy. Let us just prove that everybody does everything like they should. So the sender will prove that they actually generated the fresh onion and the intermediate relays will prove that they faithfully processed the onion and the receiver will prove that they generated a reply onion. Now, of course, all that this proof states is that the onion that we just see is either a fresh onion or a faithfully processed onion or a reply onion. Now, of course, we cannot only trust in this single step being right, but we need to make sure that we actually build an authentication chain until back at the very sender. So we do not only show that um, the onion that we just see is the um, result of a faithful processing of an onion, but we will show that it is the result of the faithfully processing of an either already faithfully processed onion or a fresh onion or a fresh reply onion, so that we can always be sure that our authentication chain goes all the way back until the sender in this case. Now, how we actually do this and make sure that we link these proofs is a bit more involved, which is why I would kindly refer you to have a look into our paper for more details. But what I want to tell you now is the second way of how we can realize implicit payload authentication for onion routing. And it is by using updatable encryption. Updatable encryption originally comes from a very different setting. It's actually about um, databases and cloud servers. So the idea is that you store your data, of course, encrypted at some cloud server, and now you want to change your key. Um, so you want to update all the stored ciphertext from an old to a new key. And of course, you would like to do this in an efficient way, so you don't want to really resend all the ciphertext. But instead, um, and this is what updatable encryption does, um, you generate an update token such that then 
um, the cloud database can update the cipher text on their own without learning any information about the including plain text or the used keys. And now there is one more very interesting property that is uh, updated that some updatable encryption schemes have, and it is plain text integrity. Plain text integrity says that well, an adversary is not able to generate a cipher text that decrypts to a message unless he trivially knows about this before. So of course he trivially knows all the cipher text that were in the cloud server. But other than that, he cannot come up with new cipher texts that actually decrypt two messages um, with, our, um, with a non-negligible probability. And this is really interesting for us because this means um, he cannot tamper with our payload. <laughs> and we use this in the, this way for onion routing. So in a very uh, different setting than the one it's uh, originally been proposed for. And we use um, updatable encryption in the sense that we apply it to the payload and our payload needs to be updated. We have update tokens at every relay. And as soon as it was modified, the update will fail because of the plain text integrity property. So let us have a look at this in a bit more detail. First of all, our sender that we trust generates all the keys and tokens and of course knows all of them. Then she starts by encrypting her message with the first key using the updatable encryption encryption function. Um, and she sends this as the payload of the onion and includes the update tokens in the header of the onion, but only in a way such that each relay only gets to see one of the update tokens. So the first relay will get the first update token. Um, the first relay will uh, use the update function of updatable encryption and update the, plane to, uh, update the payload from key one to key two. Now, sadly, this first relay is adversarial, so the adversary knows that the gray and the blue onion actually belong together. But now there's an honest relay, and the honest relay also gets an update token that only this honest relay can see, so the adversary does not know this token. Um, and that's the important thing. Now the honest relay, of course, updates um, the payload again, and the adversary does not know that this green onion is the outcome of the blue onion. It could also be any other onion that he observes at this relay at the same time um, because uh, he does not know the update token and if another update token would have been used the other onion another onion would have been the outcome now we continue this way until the onion arrives at the receiver and for the receiver we want him to be able to decrypt the message so we have to tell him the fourth key um, but nothing more than this. With this he can decrypt the message and he will not notice that this key 4 actually also belongs to key 2 earlier um, because he does not know the second update token. Additionally, we give the first, to, uh, the first key for um, the reply path to the adversary so that he can, um, on, so that he can use the update to encryption function to encrypt his reply as well. And of course, we include the update tokens for all the relays uh, again in the backward header in a way such that the adversary does not learn them, or at least not the ones of the honest relays. And again, um, he will be uh, sending his onion and with the payload encrypted under the first backwards key and the other onions will uh, always update the backwards key to the other keys that Alice has chosen. But at the point of the honest relay, the chain that the adversary can follow breaks again because he does not know the second update token for the backwards path. And therefore, he cannot link it over this honest relay, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, if the adversary decides to modify the message before the honest uh, relay, Pay, uh, the plain text integrity guarantees that the honest relay realizes and the updating of the payload will simply fail and the onion will be dropped at the honest relay. If he decides to modify after the honest relay, it is not much use for him anyways, because then he just does not get the request, but also does not learn anything from it. 
Now, of course, we need to ensure that we did not include any other ways to link onions before and after the honest relay based on other attacks than the malleability attack. Um, and we do this in our paper, but technically it's very similar to earlier work. So there has been earlier work um, that does not support replies as well as concurrent work that does support reply uh, that does support replies but is not secure against our malleability attack. So we indeed propose reusable security properties that now are protecting against the malleability attack and support replies. Uh, and we do this technically very similar to what has been done before by proposing an ideal functionality in the UC framework and then deriving game-based properties from this functionality. And finally, of course, we prove that our protocols achieve these game-based properties. But if you're interested in details, I would refer you to our paper. For now, I want to summarize the talk. So we have learned about onion routings and the dangers of the malleability attack uh, for the relationship privacy. We also learned that preventing the malleability attack and at the same time protecting replies in the sense that we want that replies and requests are indistinguishable is a challenging task because it requires us to find a way to implicitly authenticate the payload, um, which is a challenging task, but we found two ways to do this. And the first way is by using snags and proving that every relay and every sender and receiver actually did the processing correctly. And the second way is by using the plain text integrity property of updatable encryption and thereby uh, applying updatable encryption in a completely new setting where it hasn't been applied before. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and of course invite you to have a look into our paper for more details.